Hey guys, Lethal Leslie here, and today I want to talk about why I think Days Gone is a revelation to single player games and not a disappointment like so many of the reviewers have said. Personally, I think there's certain things in this game that propel single player games somewhere they may never have been before, which I'll be talking about a little later on. But first, I just want to say about the reviews that the game's had already. If you have heard some bad reviews, I tell you what, just give the game a chance for yourself. Honestly, it's one of those games that will just grip you. The gameplay's fun and engaging. It's easy and fun to just get into. The mechanics you will pick up real fast and it's worth a try. Obviously, before I start preaching about how good I think the game is, I will say I know it's not perfect, but what game is perfect? Everyone in the reviews seem to be looking for perfect games these days. Yes, there's a lot of things in this game that we've seen in other games, but you know what? You can have the same things in games. People like open world games. People like killing zombies or freakers or whatever they may be. Just because the game's similar to other games, it seems to have had bad reviews in my opinion. Yes, it has one or two bugs. What game doesn't have one or two bugs? We seem to be moaning about everything in games these days. Well, not all of us, but a lot of people seem to just want to get on that negative train and just be super negative about games. I think it gets a lot more views on YouTube, and I think that is the reason why a lot of people tend to do it. So I do know the game isn't perfect. I can obviously see that the game isn't perfect, and you never will get a game that is perfect. That is just the way it is. With that being said, let's start moving on to these four points I have, which I think this game does better than any other single game i play personally maybe you've played some that do it better than this in your opinion of course but this is just my opinion so let's get into it so number one on my list here is the bike and everything about the bike really and the way the bike works with the environment the game with you the way you have to interact with it build it up and all that kind of stuff you know you've got the fuel and damage of the bike you've got fuel pumps around the map where you go and fill up the bike and i just think it is such an interactive experience for example, you have a horse on Red Dead Redemption. And before I start mentioning Red Dead, I should say what a great game it is. I really liked Red Dead Redemption. I don't have bad words to say about it. But for a game that was considered so highly in the community, I think it's a good game to compare to this game in points where I think this matches up to it. Or even outdoes it in some situations, but I'm sure Red Dead outdoes Days Gone in others. So anyway, back into it, like I was saying, you have the fuel and the damage mechanics. So basically, you're interacting with your bike all the time. You need to plan your route a lot of the time to get fuel if you're going somewhere. Obviously, you do have your fast track options. So if you've unlocked them, that does help a lot. But sometimes you do not have the fuel to get to the fast track option. So the fuel, the fact you've always got to fuel your bike by either paying for it or finding it out in the wilderness are two like really key factors. And as well, good driving actually pays off here. Like you have to drive well. For instance, in a Red Dead or in other games, you can damage and blow up your cars. I understand that a lot of games do have that mechanic, but again, it does it well in Days Gone, the way that you find scrap, you fix it on the go, you can pay to f fuel it. And if you have a really bad crash, you are going to damage your bike. So driving well and learning how to drive well is quite important. Then you have the upgrades for the bike. I like this more than getting a new car, for instance. They've always had a new car. You've always bought a new vehicle more than upgrading in most of these games. You always tend to have to upgrade to the next vehicle or unlock the next vehicle. Whereas if you're just unlocking parts for your bike, which I think is really cool because you have the same bike throughout and then you kind of want to look after your bike. It becomes like a part of you. Same with Red Dead in this respect, in that you had the horse and you really liked that horse and then you'd want to look after your horse. It's the same with your bike. But it's nice that you can actually upgrade it. I know that's not revolutionary. It's just one of the things that's really good about the bike play in general. And then I want to talk about the feel of the bike when you're driving it around. For me, it's the best vehicle I've drove around an open world game, period. I have never felt a better vehicle on an open world game than the bike in Days Gone. And that's why I put it on the list, really, because I do feel it's a step above. It's a cut above, should I say, the rest so far, as in feel for a vehicle on a game, especially an open world game, where obviously... The driving is not the main focus of the game. It's obviously a big part of it, but it's not the main focus. Next up, I want to talk about the side missions and why I think they're the best side missions I've ever had in a single player game. And the reason I put the side missions on the list is because for me, in this game, more than any other game, the side missions mean more to the main story than anything. So basically in Days Gone, there's different regions and in each region there's a different camp and you need to build up your trust and get credits so that you can spend in those camps. And that's what I think the side missions are better than any other game I played because you, they're kind of like main storyline missions. You have to do them at some point. You feel every time you finish a mission on this game and hopefully you guys agree with me that I have played every single time I personally have finished a mission on this game, whether it be a side mission or a main mission, I'm really eager to see what I've earned, whether it be trust, whether it be credits, whether it be XP, whether it be unlocks. I'm always excited to see what I get for doing the mission. Whereas in other games, you do side missions 
you work hard, you do the side mission, and you know what? You maybe get a little bit of XP, maybe you get a bit of money, but you're already loaded. How many times has that happened in open world games where you're getting a bit of cash? But you know what? Cash is the last thing you need. Whereas days gone, up until I absolutely finish the game, I still need trust, I still need credit in camps, I'm still working those side missions along with the main mission because they're still very important and I still haven't finished them all and I still need to collect them. And that's not the only thing that's good about the side missions, we're just talking about the camps there. There are these other sites called neuro sites. In each neuro site you get this thing called a neuro injection. Now this is the way that you build up your health, your stamina and your focus in the game. Again, essential things. You're going to struggle so much if you don't do the neuro camps with health, stamina and focus. So you have to do them to build up your tolerance to those kind of things. Being able to run faster and have more health, take more hits when you face the better enemies is so important. Again, it's a side mission. You don't have to do them, but you know what? You do have to do them. So it adds so much hours and value to the game as a single player game. And I hope future single player games tie in this kind of like vital stuff into the side missions a lot more. I just want to touch on the ambush camps as well before we move on. Each ambush camp clears the fog off the map. Again, maybe not actually essential in this state, but you also get the crafting materials. You can't craft stuff without taking the ambush camps out. So clearing the fog and crafting. So that's three different types of side missions I've said there now. You have your neuro camps for getting the injections. You have your nest infestations and any other side missions they give you for gaining your trust in camp. And you have your ambush camps for clearing the map and getting the craftables all the all the missions will get you trust in camp just for the record though but every side mission you do on this game feels so vital to your progress in the game that none of them feel like a waste of time like most of the open world games i can't think of one where i felt like side missions are that important maybe you've got some but personally i don't have any moving on to my third point here and this very much ties in with the last point i was making it's the currency system basically the money in the game and they are called credits and in each camp in different areas you have a certain amount of credits you never have the same amount of credits in two regions you earn for that specific camp they give you credit for doing jobs for them and then you can buy stuff um guns upgrades for your bike and stuff like that in camp now i'll tell you the main reason why i think this is a far far better system than anything i've ever seen and it's because how many times have you been playing games open world games where you've killed people and you feel like you've got to loot them and why do you feel like you've got to loot them? Because they give you a little bit of money and you're trying to gather that money. You don't need the weapons they give you. You don't need the materials they give you. But you do need the money because everything in the game relies on money. Well, they've managed to totally take that out of the game. And I think that's the best thing they've done. You loot for yourself. You loot when you need stuff. You only loot when you're looking for certain items. And then you can just leave looting, use your items, and then you start looting again. Instead of it constantly being, I better loot, I better loot because I need the stuff better loot the only time i do feel like i kind of got the loot a little bit more and run around is after i've killed a few of the freakers they do drop a playing card which gives you a little bit of trust in camp so it is kind of like collecting currency off them but you know what it's not vital to get the trust it's a, it's an option to get the trust of course and i do collect a lot of them but i'm i don't feel like it's a necessity to go and loot every single person like i did on other games like dying light for example like on Far Cry, for example. And also, I used to do it on Red Dead. You feel like you've got to go and loot every person just so you can get what they've got on them. But on this game, it comes and goes. If you need something, you loot. And if you don't, then, of course, you don't have to. So hopefully, future games will consider adding this kind of currency system where we don't have to loot every single person. It is optional, of course, like I said. But it would be nice if it wasn't a necessity because it can become a little bit tedious. Now, moving on to the final point here. This is my final point and probably my favourite point, to be honest. And this is the reason I think this game has really done something that no game, in my opinion or my experience so far, has done to me. I don't know about you. Maybe there are games out there. I say that a few times in the video, but... Do you know what? It's because without playing every game, you do not know the experience of every game, of course. I've completed this game, just for the record now, so you do know. And they leave you on a huge cliffhanger. This game leaves me on the biggest cliffhanger I have ever seen in any single player game. You finish the game, and then you get this huge cliffhanger, and you're like, what is going on? I can't believe that. It's like you think you've done it. You think you've done only the side missions left to do. How many open world games have you guys played where you finish the actual main storyline and then there's just some tedious side missions to do that you might do for a trophy to try and get a platinum or something like that. On this game, I can't wait to finish the side mission because I know there's more coming. They've said they're going to drop DLC for it and I hope it's to do with the cliffhanger and the storyline continuing. 
because I think that would be awesome. And that is where I think this game has propelled further than other single player games. And this is just another little snippet that I've actually recorded after I finished recording the initial video here that I was supposed to mention, which I totally forgot, is that this could be like a new generation of single player games coming out to us now. A game that we get that has a huge, great storyline, open world, but then obviously with the world continues. So maybe we can have an open world games now, just like other games where there's new missions every week, where there's new stuff to do around the world every week, new enemies come in every few months kind of thing. Like for instance, if you look at a Rainbow Six Siege, they get new two new operators every three months. Maybe we could get like two new enemies or a new boss or a new main storyline every three months or something to keep these main uh, these open world single player games going and interesting to play for much longer than just one playthrough or two playthroughs if you go ahead and play it on the hard mode. So you never know what direction they're going to go in long term, but I definitely think it's a step in the right direction, leaving us on a cliffhanger, sorting out one of the main storylines, or the main storyline if you will, and then leaving the second, which is also like the main storyline in my opinion, just on a cliffhanger, ready to go for the next DLC, and then continue and just support it from then on. Obviously, I don't know what they would cost, but hopefully that's the case and we'll have to wait and see if that is the case with Days Gone. And that's basically it. That's why I think this game has done things that no other game has done before, in my opinion. And I definitely think it's worth playing if you can. If you're someone who likes zombies, someone who likes open world games, this game, in my opinion, is not going to let you down. This is kind of like a second review in a lot of ways, the way after I finished the whole game. Now, I did my first review within a few days. Now, I've actually finished the game, feeling a better spot to leave a better review, probably. And this is kind of like my second review. Roll on that DLC. That's what I say. Roll on that DLC. I'm going to leave it there. If you liked the video, like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, as always, and take it easy.